categorical data. Now we are working with categorical data being the dependent variable, right? And as I said, you can um, um, you can have a binary data set as a binary variable as a dependent variable. For example, a household owns or rents their house. So you, if ownership is one and rental is zero, then the basic uh, dependent variable is tenure, and it's coded as one or zero. And you can model households' home ownership as a function of income and wealth and, and uh, uh, support from other family members and uh, how long have they been in Canada and so on and so forth. You could have multinomial data, which, is, uh, not, which couldn't be coded at zero and one. For example, um, how do you come to school? Or how do you go to work? Do you drive by car? Um, by, do you take public transit? Do you walk? Do you bike? Right? So you could uh, arbitrarily code these, this multinomial data as one, two, three, and four. For example, one could be car, two could be transit, three could be walk, four could be bike, five could be others. And it doesn't have to be in this particular order. It could be four could be car, two could be bike, three could be transit, one could be others, and so on and so forth. So the order does not matter. When the order of the coefficient of variable does not matter, the way we code it, then it's called multinomial. And in those cases where order matters, right? For example, household uh, car ownership, zero represents zero car, one represents one car, two, two cars, three, four, and five, then there is an order, a natural order in that data, and that's called ordinal data set or ordinal variables, right? And when your dependent variable is either binomial, multinomial, or ordinal, you cannot use a simple regression model. You cannot have either of these, any of these three types of data as the dependent variable in a simple regression model because you will get biased output. Right? For example, if you say home ownership, zero and one, what if you get a home ownership forecasted value of minus 0.2, which you may, what does it mean? How can you have minus? So let's look at an example. I have here a data set of labor force participation uh, for women, right? And the data are from 1987. This is an actual data set, and it resulted in a publication. Um, and um, the data consists of 753 women, white women, uh, who are married and are between the ages of 30 and 60 years, right? So a sample of 753 women, white, married, between the ages of 30 and 60. And what we are interested in is seeing uh, what determines their labor force participation. That is, if they're working, then they are coded as one. If they're not working, then it's coded as zero. That is labor force participation. You know that if, if a household has younger children, then someone has to provide care for those younger children, and that often ends up being the responsibility of the mother, and therefore um, labor force participation um, is, uh, um, goes down for women with young children. Right? And most cases, even today, the, because the primary caregivers in every society around the world are women, it's mostly women who end up taking care of the, the younger child. Right? As the kids grow older, they are rather more autonomous, and they can take care of themselves. Then we assume that you know, the impact of children, adult children, on labor force participation for women would not be as high as it would be for uh, younger children. What about husband's income? If a husband earns a lot more, like you know, if a husband earns half a million dollars a year, would it encourage the woman to work or would it be a deterrent to working? Deterrent, right? What if they, uh, well, the husband still earns a million dollars, but the, but the wife or the mother has university degree, right? So she's, she's, you know, she's uh, empowered and franchised. Would husband's income still have an impact on her decision to work or not to work? Right? So one can assume that you know, education empowers you. And, and one way of, of expressing one's uh, ability, one's uh, sense of enfranchisement, is to, to go and work. Right? I don't know if enfranchisement is a real word or not, but I created it if it's not. So here are the variables. LFP, labor force participation. One, if the woman is working, zero otherwise. K5 is children under the age of five. Number of children under the age of five. K6 to 18 is number of children between the ages of six and 18. 
Age is the wife's age in years. WC is the wife's um, degree. If she has a university or college degree, one, zero, otherwise. So again, WC is a categorical variable. HC is husband's education. If the husband has a university degree, one, zero, otherwise. Because um, the underlying assumption is that if the husband is university educated, he may be a little bit more liberal, more educated, more, uh, more uh, uh, open to new ideas. And at that time in 1960s and 70s, many husbands really thought that women shouldn't be working, right? Uh, so husband's education was a big determin determinant of if the wife would be working or not, all else being equal. The log of wage, so the woman's estimated income is expressed in logs. It doesn't have to be in logs, it just be the case here. And the family income, uh, net of her wife's income, right? So whatever the husband and what other income is coming in um, is under the variable income. If I just do a simple tabulation, uh, you could see that uh, uh, not in labor force and labor force, uh, you could see that 43% women were not in labor force and 57% were in labor force in our data set, right? And if you look at the um, further, you look at wife's college status, so women who actually had college education, you would notice that um, only 32% women with college education uh, versus 67, 68% uh, well, let me rephrase it. 32% women with college education were not in labor force, whereas 68% women with college education were active, were in labor force. Whereas 48% women who did not have a college education were not working against 53% women with a college education who were not working. So you could clearly see that having college education had an impact on a woman's participation. But we are not controlling for anything. We're not controlling for um, number of children, income, and other factors, right? And then you can also do a chi-square test because it's a, it's a table uh, to see if it's stati statistically significant or not. And our test is statistically significant because you get very high values for chi-square and the problem p value is less than 0, 0 0.05. Now here's the model. And this is a binomial logit model, right? A binomial logit model, the dependent variable is labor force participation. It's coded as 1 or 0. You would see that a binomial logit model looks and feels very much like a regression model, right? You get the coefficients here, the standard errors, and the t-statistic in this case is called the wall statistic, and the significance is the p-value. It has to be less than 0 0.05. And I've added another coefficient called exponential of this. So the exponential of minus 1.4 is 0.23. It's difficult to explain this, interpret this, but it's easier to take the exponential of these coefficients and explain these. Now, let's look at children under the age of 5. For each additional ch child under the age of 5, the odds of a woman working against not working decline by 87%. How do I get 87%? Well, look at the coefficient. It's minus 1.46. I take the exponential. It becomes 0.23. And this implies that the, oh, my apologies, let me rephrase it. This implies that each additional child decreases the odds of mother being employed by a factor of 0.23, which is actually the same as saying 87% less chance. No, 77%, sorry. 1 minus 0.23 is 0.77 or 77%, right? Or each additional young child increases the odds of being unemployed by a factor of, and if I take it 1 divided by 0.232, 4.3%. And the, co co the odds of a college-educated woman being employed are 0.807, take the exponential of this, which is 2.2. So the odds of a college-educated woman being employed are 2.2 times higher than a woman without college.